The odds are against him, and the situation is grim. Finland. Oof. You're used to this. Hello, I'm Ryan from Ball in Europe here, and before we get to our topic of the day, which is Finland in the group of death, let's discuss all of this. Uh, and that isn't some sort of, you know, metaphorical of this. Our setup is not great right now. I openly admit to that. I've gone for the cap as a sort of a bit of glamour in the background. Well, colour, not glamour in the background. I do like my cap collections. But we also have a fan and my laundry basket there. And I have limited space for setting all this up. So that's why you have those in shot. So one of the things, a good friend of mine, uh, sent me some videos to help me out in this. Uh, over the course of the World Cup, I'm going to work out how we can make this backdrop better. So that, frankly... This backdrop reflects how much I respect you all and thank you all for tuning in and listening to me talk basketball uh, to you. So it's just basically more welcoming and more uh, of what you deserve. So, and in the interim, of course, please keep subscribing and commenting and telling your friends. But let's get it to Finland. Uh, we're going to look at it from three perspectives today. One is the group of death. Two is how things go from there. And three, you know who. Let's begin. Hi there, Emmett dipping in here on myself. So uh, basically I recorded this video when I was a little bit uh, exhausted. I still am, as you can tell. Uh, Mum was having some health issues. They're resolved now, thankfully. But it basically is why I suddenly completely forgot that uh, Hachimura has pulled out of the World Cup. Doesn't actually change really the tone of the next segment, though, so I'm going to leave it as it is. But just letting you know, sorry about that, that mix you're going to see. So yeah, the group of death, it's not great. You have host nation Japan, with uh, Utah and Hui, already this is getting tough. You got Australia, you know, they got their bronze in the Olympics, they've broken that mental barrier they have when it comes to major tournaments and going deep. And uh, to be honest, they've done pretty well in major tournaments the last while, just getting medals is their hard part. And you've got a Germany team which is hot right now. This is not easy. I would rate Finland on paper the third best team in this group. If I'm going pure chalk, they are going out. It is Australia, Germany, Finland, Japan. And exactly because of what I just said, I think I could be extremely wrong because this is an international tournament and it's such a short format when you think about the first group, like only three group games. That really, really does mean that a single mistake, even by a big team, can be enormous in terms of the grand scheme of things. And when you're used to playing the underdog, that's not a bad position to be in. Finland obviously open against the Boomers. That's not going to be an easy one, don't get me wrong. But uh, also, won't be an easy one for Australia either. And when you've got the host nation in your group, it adds a little bit of oof to things. Because Japan, you've got to be thinking they're going to be going big in all three games. They've got a good side. Like, there's no doubt they've got talent. And I look at this group, and it's the only group in the whole of this World Cup, all eight groups, where I can say, hand on heart... And also just on the air, because does that really make a difference? But honestly, my genuine belief, any side can beat any side in this group on its day. Like, yes, on paper and in practice, some should go deeper. Some, some should be better. But again, you've got this sort of sprint format, which, you know, instead of a five-game group, where it's obviously still short enough, but that room for error, there was a bit of chance to break out and do something. Four, four, three-game group. I mean, one mistake by a big gun, and things are totally flipped. And, like, you look at Germany and Australia, they're both teams who believe they can medal. Australia, frankly, I think, believe they can win it. Um, I certainly haven't ruled them out. Um, Germany, I'm sure, believe they can come out of this tournament with a medal. And I kind of go, right, that's, that's like some serious competition. Like, Finland could have gotten much softer groups in this, no question, even with their seeding, just to be clear could have gotten a much softer group. They got the toughest possible group I think they could have landed here. And it's not ideal, but the nature of that short format, like I'm saying, I think that's the biggest weapon Finland has. It can go to one situation like this. Now, it could easily go 0-3, and Chalk says it go 1-2. I see a very doable route to 2-1 here. I see them getting Germany or Australia on a down day. Now, the one risk I see for Finland, by the way, and this is a big one, is 2-1 might not be enough. And the reason for that is quite simple. I could easily see three teams going 2-1 in this group. Uh, basically, yourselves and Germany and Australia knocking each other off. And then, obviously, head-to-head -head scoring comes into play. So, that's awkward. Don't get me wrong. But while the odds are against you, 
I don't think it was against you as the rest of the world thinks. I think it is very plausible Finland emerges from this group, which would automatically, by the way, be its best performance in a World Cup, I believe, because I don't think they've... Well, there's only the second World Cup, and they did not get out of the group phase the last time, and so they would be in the last 16, so yeah, the last time would be 2014. And uh, when I had quite a few beverages with the, uh, the fine Finns, and yeah, and that's when things kind of get interesting. So after the group phase, things kind of open up because one of the upsides, oddly, of being in a group of death is you suddenly haven't got it quite as hard the very next stage. Probably will need to be Slovenia, which not easy, but it will be a bit of a tired Slovenia. Remember, like. Luca will be carrying a load for them. I've discussed that in a previous video, which may be getting linked to somewhere out here. Who knows? And they'll be a beatable Slovenia, like, no question. Like, again, you'll be underdogs. But since when is Finland, just in general, uh, but particularly in team sports at the uh, outside of hockey, really, not used to being underdogs? And Finland, there's been enough times in hockey you've been underdogs too, let's be honest, and you've punched through. Um, but, um, yeah, so again, look at this, and I go plausible and then you're kind of going Finland if they can get out of the group of death suddenly a route to a World Cup quarter-final it's very doable now the side of the draw for a quarter-final is not nice um, like I think I was looking at it and like your options include potentially a route to Spain or Canada I'd have to go back and I'm a bit lazy in that front but it's not a pleasant route I know that certainly not ideal but like not implausible like the point is Finland's group of death ride could be a whole lot worse. Like, they could have been paired off, say, with a group like the Greece USA group, uh, where realistically they'd be needing to beat the USA based on what we're talking about records wise coming out of this group in order to make the quarters, which bit of a bit of an ask there, bit of an ask. They've already had two medal contenders in the first group phase first group phase, and that means I think they should have a bit softer if they can get out of it. So, very manageable, and I don't know why I'm gesticulating this much, Susie Yengi, but it's just what I'm doing, and we're going to roll with it. So now, let's talk about you-know-who, plus someone else. So yeah, Markomania. I mean, we saw what Larry Markinen can do at the last Eurobasket, and let's not forget the context. He got traded on the eve of Eurobasket, and... I just remember the attitudes were so extraordinary. Like, Laurie was just, well, it's time to get out to business and then, isn't it? Like, there was a whole lot of, you know, Euros getting moved in and around the lead up to Eurobasket or just afterwards. And the maturity Laurie showed, and that's just, just business, baby. And obviously, you know, the, the year he's had since, like, he was fantastic at Eurobasket, no question. And some tremendous performances, like, and then you look at what he did with Utah this year, where he has blossomed into the player we all believed he could be. And I remember saying to people coming out of that Eurobasket, like on the US side, listen, I know Utah's in a rebuilding mode, but I think they've gotten really smarter than everybody realizes with marketing, because people think marketing will just be a short-term thing for them to move on. No, no, I think they're thinking of Larry being part of their long-term plan, because y'all got to realize the step up Larry is ready to make, and he's made it. All-star. Great. And yeah, so, but of course, for Finland with this World Cup, obviously bad for Laurie, just to be clear, did the bonus of he didn't make the playoffs. He had a good season, and Utah generally performed better than we all expected, but didn't make the playoffs, which means he had a bit of rest, a bit more rest, and also, frankly, made it a lot easier for him to say yes to wearing the national jersey. He's always a man who wants to wear the national jersey, but when you have consecutive summers, you know, boom, boom, playoffs into, you know, international play, it gets tougher players to do that. For Laurie Markkinen, wasn't tough to make that decision. Now, obviously, having the very young and extraordinarily talented Lasse Tovi as his head coach certainly helps. Obviously, Lasse, with his link in Utah now as well, uh, certainly aids. So that, I think, really puts Lasse as well in an opportunity here because he's in the spotlight. He had an extraordinarily well-coached tournament because, again, his ability to manage Laurie's rest while still having him play heavy minutes that Eurobasket it was kind of the anti-Slovenia, <laughs> you know, it was an everything was so measured from Tove uh, at that tournament. And obviously now that he's with him, you know, in, in Utah, um, you know, there's going to be that benefit there. And I think for Lasse as a coach, if we can get them out of this group of death, it'll help his stock as a coach. It'll obviously make it more revered in Finland. 
And I think he's at the mental place he knows how to work around those assets that he has in order to do that. So there's an awful lot to like here, is what I'm trying to say politely. There's a really, really an awful lot to like here in terms of what Finland is doing and where they're going. Can they go very deep? Not likely. But at the same time, once you get to knockout play, things tend to get a bit crazy in international tournaments. And you've got one of the players who can take over a game at will. Are Finland capable of being that plucky underdog who does better than we all expect? It's Finland. Yes. And they are more than Larry Markkinen. He may be the star. He may be the superstar. He may be one of the best ballers alive right now. But even he knows that while he, the team rides and dies with him, it rides and dies with him, not just on him. As in, he's got to make those other guys around him more valuable. And he has and he does. And while, you know, Pateri's retired, uh, you know, great dude, Pateri Copeland, by the way, always been a big fan, uh, more because he's got the, you know, a man who was always aware of his age off the court, shall we say, and able to have that vibe of, oh, middle age, that's what sure isn't the basketball, great. Uh, you know, so Sassy is obviously getting on in years and all that, but like, you know, you look at this, this, this team, it's like, there's a lot of dudes who are young and hitting their prime and have the energy that Larry will need around him for Finland to succeed. Yeah, I, I like this team a lot. I'm calling them to not get out of the group of death, but I would not be surprised in the slightest if I'm wrong. Does that sound like I'm hedging? Yes, it does. Group of death, but I'm going to go harsh and say they don't progress, but so that's my call. That's the one you can bully me over afterwards, Susie Yangi fans, but I really wouldn't be surprised if I'm wrong, and you don't get to give me any benefit for that for that qualifier. So that's thing. You get to punish me for saying I'm wrong. But listen, it's very manageable, very doable, and you won't, nothing that you do surprise me these days. We have other videos being linked here somewhere. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Really expect, expect the support, and uh, see you all at the World Cup.